Bill Gates was hosting his goalkeepers um, uh, event in New York, and so he invited me to come and speak. And this, they're doing some amazing things, not just the organization, who the, the people they're supporting. And um, I get to the event, and I speak for like 10 minutes, and I get off stage, and I'm like waving at the crowd, and I'm, I'm walking backwards off the stage, moving to the backstage area, and then I crash into like a person. And as I crash into them, I see the eyes of people looking at me, and everyone's like, oh, shit, what have you done? You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like, calm down. Humans bump humans all the time. <laughs> and I turn, and the person I bumped into was Barack Obama, right? <laughs> yeah, but like physically, like, when I say bump, I mean like bump, like, <laughs> it, you know? And so I turn, and then he's like, uh, whoa. He's like, it, but literally, his hands are up, and then he's like, uh, watch where you go. And then, uh, what he, he, said, he says, yeah, he says, watch, he said, watch where you walk. And so, so I turned, and then I was like, hey, man, I'm walking over here. <laughs> and you should have seen everyone's face. They were like, oh, shit. Because <laughs> I think they thought I didn't recognize him or I didn't know who he was. You could see people like, that's the president of the United States of America. And I was like, yo, man, calm down. And so I was like, hey, how are you, Mr. President? I haven't seen you in a while. And he's like, oh, doing good. How you been? You good? You good? I'm like, yeah, I'm doing good. And like, I'm looking at his face, and I didn't intend this, but I'm looking into his eyes and I'm speaking to him. And in that moment, I really, like, he's looking really, really good. Like, his skin is looking fuller. His, do you know what I mean? No, he just, he doesn't look as stressed as he was. And so, it slipped out. I didn't plan it at all. So, I'm speaking to him. He's like, uh, how you doing? Uh, da, 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 da. And then he says that. And then I was like, I was like, you're looking cute, Mr. President. <laughs> and he goes, uh, he goes, uh, well, thank you. Thank you. And I was like, no, no. I meant, I meant like, you look good. Uh... So, the blackout happened. Dave, when, what day was the blackout? Saturday. Saturday. So, um, so Dave and I, we, 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 we live in the, in the same building, and he came from South Africa with me uh, to come work on The Daily Show, right? And so, which, it's, it's blackout. The, our building is gone. Everything is shut down. Someone's trapped in the elevator. Um, and we're, we're all chilling together in, <laughs> in Dave's apartment. He's the only person who had candles. I've never thought of candles. <laughs> I've never, I've genuinely never thought of candles. He just like lit candles like, well, I didn't even think of these things. <laughs> and so our other friend who's staying in the building visiting comes down. So now you've got these three black people from South Africa hanging out together. And we're just chilling, we're having a good time. And what happens is, because we're doing nothing now in the blackout. And so we needed to move a TV from one apartment to another apartment, right? <laughs> Which I know is a weird thing, but like, <laughs> Long story short, like, one person needed a TV to watch something in 4K, and they didn't have a 4K TV, so we're like, we'll move the 4K TV to your apartment so you can watch the thing. So anyway, so we're like, okay, cool. Let's get the TV, let's move the thing. And so there we are, like, in the hallway. This is like, it's a pretty big TV. It's like a 60-inch TV, you know, like, carrying the thing, and then, like, walking in the hallway. And as we walk into the hallway, the lights come on. <laughs> and then... <laughs> And then, like, our, like, all the neighbors come out, because everyone wants to see if the lights are on ever, so everyone, like, opens their doors in the hallway, <laughs> and then it's like, we're there with a the TV. <laughs> and you, you know what's funny? Because I, I, I love my neighbors, and we know each other, and you, you like, you, the neighbors are, hey! <laughs> and they're like, hi, hi, Trevor, hi, David. And, and we're like, um... It's our TV. <laughs> We're just, we're moving it to another, and you could just see it was like an awkward moment. It was like, oh, man. Went to the Met Gala last night. Always insane. <laughs> Always insane. You know what's, what's crazy about the Met Gala is that every single time I go to the Met Gala, I'll get more hate in my Twitter feed and stuff <laughs> about fashion than, than about regular politics. <laughs> like, with politics, I'll say whatever I say on the show, and people will be like, you know what, I don't like your point of view and blah, 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 and whatever, but I guess... But with fashion, people are just like, how dare you? <laughs> How dare you? Because <laughs> my look, like, so the theme of the event this year was camp, okay? Uh, and I guess everyone has a different interpretation of camp. But from what I understand, camp doesn't mean gay necessarily, even though especially black, uh, queer uh, people in America were the ones who moved the idea of camp forward. But, like, people have this idea that, like, camp means drag, camp means gay only. Do you get what I'm saying? So camp was the theme. Everyone was like, what does camp mean? And so everyone's trying to figure this out. And so I was dressed uh, by um, uh, Off-White, Virgil Abloh, right? And so he was like, we're going to do this thing for you. It's like, like playing off the whole, like, political statements back in the day and camp. We're going to go our interpretation of camp. And so you get to the, get to the event. And so now everyone, because this is my favorite thing about the Met Gala, is no one actually knows, like, what the thing is. <laughs> 
Like, this is, this is the thing I'm gonna tell you now. Everyone, act, no one actually knows. This is like a dirty secret. No one, everyone goes like, we're here for the event and the theme, but like, imagine if everyone, imagine if everyone got invited to an event and got a different dress code. That's what happens at the Met Gala. <laughs> we all think we came for the, with the right thing. And then when you get there, everyone looks around like, oh, I'm not at the right event. <laughs> Not at the right event. Like Zach Posen, he's a designer and he's, he's friendly to me. And you know, he wasn't the, like, so as a joke, he looked and then he was like, oh my God, Trevor, a t-shirt? And then I was like, yeah, that is part of it. Then he's like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> and I was like, what? And then I felt bad. I was like, oh geez, did I, did I do this wrong? Have I got, then I turned and Katy Perry was a hamburger. <laughs> then I was like, no, I don't know how this fashion thing works. But I'm pretty certain a hamburger uh, is uh, not better than a t-shirt. I'm just gonna put my money on it. And so then I was like, I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna have fun. And then uh, you went in and people were like, who's dressed like what and everything. And let me tell you something now. People think that the Met Gala is just people walking up a carpet. No, it's a beautiful exhibition where they raise money for the Metropolitan Museum, you know, so that they can keep the prices low so they can get great exhibitions. People in New York can go and see the space. So you go through the exhibition, which is really cool. And then there's dinner. And you know what isn't easy to sit down as? A hamburger. <laughs> Guess who's winning with the t-shirts? All right, dope. Anything else before we move on? Anything? Yes, ma'am, here. Yeah. So we noticed you got here around three. What do you do in the time period between three and <laughs> That's, so let me tell you, this was the most fun. So normally I get here in the morning, right? But now because of the voice, I have to start my day doing vocal training. So I go see my vocal coach and then I go see the voice doctors and I get, so normally we start the day at like 9.30, 10.30 together here at the show. So today, and like this week, I go to the, my voice doctor, then I go to my voice coach, do like a whole thing with them, get the voice, they look at it, they put things down my throat, I make sounds, eee, and then they look at it. Then, so today, when I was coming to, today was one of my favorite days ever. Because then, when I was on the way to the show today, someone in one of those sanitation trucks, you know the ones that sweeps the road and stuff? Yeah, they just like pulled up and then they honked and they're like, yo, Trevor, you wanna get it? <laughs> and I was like, no. And I was like, yeah, actually I do. <laughs> And then I jumped in the sanitation truck and then we just swept the streets together. <laughs> so I was supposed to come straight to work, but then I was just like driving around New York, sweeping the streets with the person. And then we were just like driving around. It's like, ah, sweep there, sweep there, sweep there, sweep there, sweep there, sweep there. And then that's like what we did for a while. And then, and then he was like, all right, can I drop you off at the show? Then I was like, yeah, drop me off at the show. And then drove me in the sanitation truck and then dropped, and then I literally hopped out at the Daily Show. And there's some people who saw me and their faces, cause the sanitation truck pulls up and it like opens at the front and then I popped out and then I saw people look at me and you know immediately when a person's mind just goes, no. <laughs> Cause their face was like, oh, that's Trevor. Then their mind was like, that is not, Trevor does not come out of a sanitation truck <laughs> to the Daily Show. So they looked at me and just ignored that I existed as a human being. And then like I walked past them and they, like some people were waiting to come to the Daily Show and they were just like, nope, that wasn't him. <laughs> we will wait for the real Trevor Noah who does not emerge from sanitation trucks. Do I miss the summer or the warm weather? Do you what? Miss the warm weather in South Africa? I think the question you should be asking is how much do I hate this cold? <laughs> that is the more appropriate question. It is, it's, it's horrible. This is like the worst, like, you know what it is? Like in the morning, I can feel, like I've never dried my hair the way I dry my hair now. Cause in the morning I can feel every droplet that is on my skin that, you, like I've never worn this many layers of clothing like, it, it's, it's, the, it, it, I've never been this cold in my, like if the police stopped me in New York and they were like, put your hands up, I'd be like, no. <laughs> I'd just be like, no. I'd be like, no. They're in my pockets and they're warm. Shoot me. <laughs> I'm just like, no. Like, it's, 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 like you have to wear like so many layers. The worst thing is that like, it's, 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 it's not consistently cold. So it's like cold in the world. And then when you come in, it's like, Americans like pump up the, the heat so much. So it's like, I'm freezing and then I'm too hot, and then I've got the club, but now I've got like the pants under the pants under the pants. I can't take the pants off. You know what I mean? Then I have to like get naked just to like pee. Like I feel like how women feel when you wear rompers. It's like, why would you even do that? I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing in the truck? Getting naked. It's horrible. It's the worst, I, like I just, yeah. It's, it's everything about it is, is, I don't know. We should just leave. Do we not wonder where the ducks have gone? We should just go. We should just like stop New York for the winter. We go somewhere else. We just call somewhere else New York. We should just colonize a warm place. <laughs> you know what we should do? This is what my proposal is. We should leave New York in the winter. And then like we go colonize Florida for the winter. 
and then we force them to come here. Because I think too much warm weather makes people crazy. That's why Florida's the way it is. <laughs> and, like, cold weather, like, like, makes you sane real quick. So they, they come here, they'll be like, I shoot armadillos. And then they get here and they're like, all right, all right, calm down, calm down, calm down. <laughs> and then they go back to Florida and they'll be like, yeah, that's what we do. You ready? Where are you from? New Zealand. New Zealand. <laughs> oh, that's a long, long journey. Yeah, how long are you here for? Um, six weeks. Six weeks? <laughs> well, I just like, it's like flat, six weeks. Yeah, that's cool. Why did you come now? We just like, I want to see what suffering in the cold seems like. <laughs> Just want to feel it? Summer holidays. Summer holidays? <laughs> <laughs> so you're just like, I'm just gonna skip summer and go and... <laughs> Do you guys get snow in New Zealand? No, no you don't, right? It, not even with, like, climate change that hasn't happened? Because in South Africa, we didn't really get snow, and now we get a bit of snow in random times, sometimes. You guys know snow? We get snow, like, down south. Right. Really down south, but not where we are. Oh, so it's just like, this is, is this... So you enjoying the snow? Oh, yeah, you see, I like that. Yeah, because New Yorkers, everyone's just like, there's goddamn snow everywhere. <laughs> there's goddamn snow everywhere. And then, like, every foreigner's like, it's the most wonderful time of the year. 